Hey, welcome to my channel. I hope you'll subscribe and hit the bell and give me thumbs up and make comments. Help me get this out to as many people as I can. This is a Bible study for the day. Uh, actually, kind of a Bible study for the middle of the week <clears throat> on February the 9th, 2023. It's for Wednesday. And I call this Dealing with an Enemy. This is one of the great passages in the Old Testament. It's from 1 Samuel, since the whole 24th chapter of 1 Samuel. And um, <clears throat> we're dealing with King David. Do you ever have, ever have an enemy? <laughs> Most of us have at some point. And how do you deal with an enemy? Well, let me tell you something. King Saul became David's enemy. Totally unwarranted unnecessary, but he became King David's enemy, and David dealt with him in a profound way, and there's some great lessons we can learn from it. Saul was the king, okay, and he was rejected because he would not obey God. God rejected him, and God chose David to be the next king, and he had him anointed by Samuel to be the king while Saul was still the king, and I think Saul figured out that David had been anointed to be the king. And God was with David, but God was not with Saul because Saul was disobedient, okay? So you remember the story, David killed Goliath of Gath, the giant, you know, with a slingshot. And then he went over and took Goliath's sword and cut off his head and saved the army. And so he was, he was famous, he was a hero. Saul was still king. David had already been anointed. Okay, and Saul hated David. Okay, the uh, <clears throat> when they came back from war, the women sang. They said, Saul has killed his thousands, David his tens of thousands. Saul did not like that. He hated that. He resented David. And, you know, he, he uh, gave David his daughter in marriage because he killed Goliath, okay, and uh, esteemed him in a lot of ways, but he hated him because he, he resented him. He was getting the attention and Saul was not, and he knew eventually he figured out that he was going to be king. Now, if you look at the 18th chapter of 1 Samuel, verses 28 and uh, 29, it says, when Saul realized that the Lord was with David, and that his daughter, Michael, who he gave him as a wife, loved David. Saul became, Saul became still more afraid of him, and he remained, listen to this, his enemy for the rest of his days. Saul saw David as his enemy. He probably had no better friend than David. Won wars for him and stuff, but he hated him. He was his enemy. So how do you deal with that? How do you deal with an enemy? Now, Saul was afraid of David, you know, and he saw him as the enemy. So how do you treat your enemy? I think we can learn a lot from the 24th chapter of 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 24. And I want to look, first of all, at verses 1 through 5. 1 Samuel 24, 1 through 5. After Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told David is in the desert of En Gedi. He was trying to run David down and kill him, okay? So Saul took 3,000 chosen men from all Israel and set out to look for David and his men near the crags of the wild goats. Now, Saul took 3,000 men. David had an army of 600 men, and Saul had an army of 3,000. He was looking for David. He wanted to find him and kill him. He came to the sheep pens along the way, and, and a cave was there. So Saul went in to relieve himself. This is an area where there's all kinds of caves. And um, people live in caves there today. They probably lived in caves there then. They hid in caves. They used caves for all kinds of things, all kinds of caves in that area. And Saul went in to, he treated the cave like a latrine, like a bathroom, okay? And he went in there and used the bathroom. David and his men were far back in the cave. They were in the same cave, David and his men, okay? And the men said, this is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. Then David crept unnoticed and cut off a corner of Saul's robe. 
Afterward, David was conscious stricken for he had cut off the corner of his robe. Now, why was David conscious stricken for cutting off his robe? He could have killed him. And that's what his men wanted him to do. And he knew he was running him down trying to kill him, that Saul was trying to kill David, but he didn't kill him. Why? And then why, why was he conscious stricken? Robes had a significance. His robe was a symbol of his power and his authority and the fact that he was the anointed of the Lord. And in a way, David had disrespected his robe and thus disrespected his anointing from God. That's how David saw it. And uh, David, had, David was a man of integrity, a man of great conscience. So he could have killed Saul, but he didn't. He did not. Listen, Saul was his enemy, but he chose not to take revenge. That's the first thing we need to see. He was his enemy, could have taken revenge, could have killed him, but he chose not to take revenge. So one of the things that we all need to learn to do, and this is hard, when you have a chance to get back at your enemy, you don't have to take revenge. David didn't. And believe me, he came out okay in the whole thing, okay? Now look at verses uh, 14. Let's look at verses 6 through 13. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master. In other words, kill, kill King Saul, the Lord's anointed, or lift my hand against him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. Listen, he recognized that Saul was still the king. He was the anointed of the Lord. He recognized that, and he responded to that by saying, you know what? I'm not going to violate the king who is anointed by God. This is, this is respect for God's anointing, respect for God because he anointed Saul king, and respect for the anointing of God. He wasn't going to kill a guy who was God's guy. Even though he was out of favor with the Lord, and David was going to be the next king, but he wouldn't violate that, okay? With these words, David rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul, and Saul left the cave and went his way. Then David went out of the cave and called out to Saul, My lord, the king! Saul looked behind him. David bowed down, prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He said to Saul, Why do you listen when men say David is bent on harming you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lift my hand against my master because he is the Lord's anointed. David saying, I could have killed you, but I didn't because you're the Lord's anointed. You're my master. You're my king. Now, David had been anointed king, but Saul was still king. He was still operating as the king of Israel. David would not violate that. And he was his enemy, and he wouldn't get him back. See, my father, look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut the corner of your robe, but did not kill you. Now understand and recognize that I am not guilty of wrongdoing or rebellion. He pleaded his case. I have not wronged you but you are hunting me down to take my life. He confronted the wrong that his enemy was doing to him. And then listen to this, verse 12. May the Lord judge between you and me. He's turning it over to God, okay? And may the Lord avenge the wrongs you've done to me. He said, I'm gonna leave, leave this up to the Lord. He'll let him avenge the wrongs but my hand will not touch you. As the old saying goes from evildoers come evil deeds, and so my hand will not touch you. In other words, he said, I'm not an evildoer, so I'm not gonna do the evil deed. I won't do that. I'm gonna leave this up to God. And he did. He left it up to God. He left it up to God. He turned the whole thing over to the Lord. May the Lord judge between us. And that's kind of how we need to look at things. You know what? The Bible does say, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. There's times where we just need to leave the vengeance up to God. It's hard to do sometimes, especially if you can get back at somebody. But it almost, it never solves anything. I was almost ready to say it almost never solves anything. It never solves anything. It creates more battles is what it does. 
So leave the vengeance up to the Lord. That's what David's doing here. And then look at verses 14 and 15. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom are you pursuing? A dead dog, a flea? He's saying, I'm nothing compared to you. Why are you chasing me? I'm a dead dog. I mean, dogs are the lowest on the totem pole, but I'm more, I'm lower than that. I'm a dead dog. I'm a flea on a dog. That's lower than a dead dog. Why are you chasing me around? You're the king. May the Lord be our judge and decide between us. May he consider my cause and uphold it. In other words, he's putting himself in God's hands. May he vindicate me by delivering me from your hand. He's saying, I'm going to trust God to deliver me from your hand. The Lord will handle this. The Lord will handle this. And then 1 Samuel 24, 16 through 20, 22. And this is really interesting. When David finished saying this, Saul asked, is that your voice, David, my son? And he was his son. He was his son-in-law, married to his daughter. He gave him his daughter, Michael, as a wife. And he wept aloud. He recognized that he was wrong. He recognized the error of his way. He says, you are more righteous than I, he said. You have treated me well, and I have treated you badly. He recognized how wrong he was. Didn't last. He still chased David around. You've treated me well, but I treated you badly. You have just now told me of the good you did to me, but the Lord delivered me into your hands, but you did not kill me. When a man finds his enemy, does he let him go get away unharmed? May the Lord reward you well for the way you treated me. He's saying, you know, God will take care of you. He'll reward you for the way you treated me. And then listen to verse 20. He knew what was coming. I know you will surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hands. Boy, wasn't that a mouthful. David did become king. Saul ended up getting killed in battle, but not by David. Not by David. He died. And David did become king and eventually over all of Israel, the greatest king king in the history of Israel, revered more than anybody else, David was. What Saul said came true, and Saul went. Saul died. The Lord took care of it. David didn't have to. And then he says this, now swear to me by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants or wipe out my name from my father's family. David honored that for the rest of his life. He went out of his way to honor it several times. He would not, he tried every way he knew to protect Saul's family and honor the commitment that he made. So David gave his oath to Saul. And then Saul returned home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. Saul went back to Jerusalem and, um, you know, was king for a while longer. He got into more battles and ended up getting killed in battle. But David gave his oath, and he honored that oath. The enemy was Saul, and he was trying to get David, and he, he started it up again, okay? And so here's, here's the three principles that I see. Number one, may the Lord reward you, okay? He's saying, you know, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to retaliate. I'm, I'm leaving that up to God. May the Lord reward you. Second, I know you'll be king, okay? He affirmed, Saul affirmed that, that the Lord would be king. And he, he knew that the Lord would reward David for the good that he'd done. And he says, Israel will be established in your hand. Good things are coming to David. Bad things are coming to Saul. Saul died in battle, not at David's hand. So how do you treat your enemy? It, it's about this simple. Leave the retribution up to the Lord like David did. Turn it over to God. Do the right thing and you'll come out on top. That's a great lesson for us to learn. We all are going to have enemies at some time. I certainly have. And uh, <clears throat> leave it up to the Lord. Forgive them, and don't take retribution yourself. Leave that up to God. That's what David did. Very, very wise. Let's pray. Father, give us the wisdom to not take retribution, to turn it over to you and let you handle it. And I know you will, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Talk to you soon.